Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a post-apocalyptic zombie movie from 2016, titled The Girl with All the Gifts. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Melanie is lying in bed as the lights in her cell come on. She gets up and starts preparing for school. Two soldiers come in and she greets them happily, but the only thing they care about is securing her to the wheelchair. They will her out in the hallway, getting her in a line with other children like her. Melanie and the others are placed in a classroom, positioned by numbers. Melanie asks the teacher, Miss Justino, to tell them a story and proposes she reads them a myth, so that it could count as history. The teacher complies reluctantly and reads them the myth of Pandora's box. After class, Melanie is taken back to her cell, where the two edgy soldiers refuse to greet her goodnight. Later, she's given dinner. The serving is a plate full of worms. She falls asleep as she eats. The next day, Melanie gets a visit from Dr. Caldwell. The girl has solved a riddle the doctor had given her, so she gives her a new one, explaining that it's a logic problem. She asks her to solve the problem of Schrodinger's cat. When Melanie can't answer, the doctor writes something down concerning her behavior and reads it back to her, calling her a subject. Lastly, the doctor asks Melanie for a number and she replies with 13. Later, the soldiers pick her up and the other children for school again. As Melanie is being wheeled past the numbered cells, she sees that number 13 hasn't been opened. When she gets to the classroom, the same numbered place remains empty. The teacher decides to give them a writing assignment for that particular class and the children are worried that they wouldn't know what story to tell. Melanie is the only one writing a longer one in her notebook, so when the teacher asks for someone to read it loud what they wrote, she quickly raises her hand. She depicts herself as the savior and hero in her writing. The teacher gets overwhelmed by the story and goes over to Melanie, wanting to touch her. Suddenly, Sergeant Parks bursts inside the classroom and screams that touching the children is forbidden. He wants to give Justino a reminder of why that's the case, so he walks up to one of the children and rolls his sleeve, bringing his arm close to it. The child sniffs him and unhinges its jaw, wanting to bite him. The other children mimic the same behavior. After the class, Sergeant Parks walks into Melanie's cell as the others are getting ready to take off her restraints. The girl antagonizes him, so he leaves her restrained to the chair. The same night, Justino goes to see Melanie and when she realizes that she has been left like that, she walks into the cell and starts taking off the restraints. The girl gets a sniff of the teacher's scent and starts turning like the other children. Before Melanie turns completely, she tells the teacher to get out. Later that night Dr. Caldwell comes to visit her again. They chat and she asks the girl for another number. Melanie answers with the number 4, which is the same number as her own cell. The following morning, Sergeant Parks comes in to get Melanie. He gets her out of the cell and inside of an elevator. He wheels her out of the facility as gunshots are heard all around. Soldiers are seen running and shooting toward the fence of the military complex. Melanie is confused by the sight, as Parks wheels her to another part of the complex and takes her in a laboratory where Dr. Caldwell is waiting. She asks the girl about Schrodinger's cat, but when she doesn't get the response she wants, she explains that the cat in the box is both alive and dead. Just like Melanie. A second doctor injects a sedative in her arm, instantly knocking her out. They move her to a slab and restrain her, but she quickly wakes up. Justino runs inside to stop the doctor from cutting up Melanie. After a few other promising words, she convinces the teacher to put her weapon down and immediately pepper sprays her, incapacitating her, so the soldiers can arrest her. She explains to her that she isn't just cutting Melanie up, but is using her as a source for a vaccine. Justino is taken away and alarms start blaring. Caldwell tells the other doctor to drop the shutters, but as she does that a zombie breaks trough the glass, biting her relentlessly. Caldwell kills the zombies, cutting her own hand in the process. The other doctor starts turning completely, but she escapes the lab just in time. Melanie is left alone in the lab with the zombie, though it doesn't touch her. The girl grabs a scalpel and frees herself from the restraints. Melanie walks outside to find complete chaos in the complex. Zombies running around attacking soldiers, as they try to shoot them down. Suddenly, she sees Justino getting beat up by the soldiers. Enraged, she runs toward them, attacks and bites them, eventually killing them both, before passing out. Justino wakes to find Melanie beside her, picks her up and gets her inside a military vehicle. The zombies completely take over the complex, as the vehicle is seen leaving, followed by a herd. Sometime later, it stops in the middle of nowhere, as Parks and Kieran realize that Melanie is in the back of the vehicle with them. Justino lets the girl out, as Caldwell screams that doing that is not her decision to make. Melanie runs just a little way off from the vehicle and stops, clearly seeing the outside for the first time. The others stay by the vehicle trying to radio to other outposts to no avail, 
as the doctor tells them to retrieve her test subject. Parks, Kieran and Caldwell check the vehicle for supplies, but find no water or food, just a mask, used to retrieve zombies. The sergeant makes a plan to go south to Beacon, assuming everyone back at the complex is dead, except the zombie children. They put Melanie on the gunner's seat of the vehicle, strapped in and masked, and make their way to a river to get water. When they arrive there a few zombies find them, prompting a shootout with the soldiers. One of the soldiers gets bitten in the fight, so Parks waits a moment to see if he'll turn and when the process starts, he shoots him. Closing the doors of the vehicle, he realizes that Justino has brought Melanie in with them, which makes him terribly nervous. The girl asks about the zombies and Caldwell explains that they were people infected with a fungus, transmitted through biting. When Parks goes to start the vehicle, he realizes that it's busted and that they would have to go on foot through London, a quicker but more dangerous route. Parks and Kieran survey the perimeter which they would have to cross. It's filled with zombies. They inform the others that there is no alternative but to pass trough the zombies and find shelter and supplies once they're inside the city. The group walks between a mass of sleeping zombies, careful not to wake them. Suddenly, Parks stops when they reach a dead end. A zombie mother pushes a baby cart toward them and Caldwell goes up to her, making her stop. She sees the baby move in the cart and checks it, only to find a rat inside. She yelps, waking the zombie mother first and then the others. The group manages to escape and moves through the zombie-filled streets of the city, eventually finding an abandoned hospital and going inside. Parks finds an opening to another floor and they all climb up, where they will be much safer. Parks, Justino and Kieran immediately go on patrol while Caldwell and Melanie stay back. As they're left alone, the girl asks where she came from. The doctor explains that her and others like her were found on a maternity ward in a hospital. They were the children of mothers who got infected with the fungus while they were still pregnant, so the infection got in their system through the placenta. Caldwell tells her that they were different than the other zombies, able to think and react almost like real people. Later, Justinuo returns, giving Melanie new clothes she found for her and apologizing that she didn't find any food. That night, Park and Justino talk about Melanie and he tells her that the girl loves her. Meanwhile, Kieran is guarding the girl and she bonds with him as well. The next morning, they notice that more zombies have gathered in front of the hospital. They have no way out but Melanie comes up with an idea. Since the zombies won't attack her, she convinces them to let her go outside and find a way to move the zombies away from the building. Caldwell doesn't like the plan, but, without an alternative plan, the others agree. Before she leaves, Melanie asks to put on her new clothes. She goes outside and passes the zombies without trouble. Suddenly, she sees a cat, hunts it down and eats it raw. Later, she goes into a house and finds a little dog. When she comes back, she uses it as a decoy for the zombies, getting them all away from the hospital. Parks puts the mask and the handcuffs back on and they continue the journey trough the abandoned city, headed for Beacon. On their way, they see something strange, the fungus growing out of the bodies of the zombies, something the doctor thinks is the next stage in the life cycle of the fungus. She then tells Melanie that in her case, the fungus works more as a symbiote, than a parasite like in the others. Going deeper in the city, they find a huge mass of bodies growing into a massive fungus, that Caldwell suspects is the reason why no walking zombies are around. When enough of them come together, they transform into the mature stage of the fungus that can pollinate larger areas, if not the entire world. On their way, they suddenly find a mobile laboratory. They get inside the vehicle and start looking trophic. Park tries the engine first and then the radio. No response. Kieran leaves on a supply run and Melanie is getting uneasy, like she's about to turn. She tells them that she needs to eat too and they let her out to hunt. She finds her food fast and tears right through it. When she's done eating, she hears a strange sound and follows it to a bookstore. She peeps trough and sees a group of children communicating with grunts. Melanie understands that they are just like her, when suddenly one of them comes inside and tells the others that he has smelled something. They all follow him out. Back at the mobile lab, Caldwell is getting sicker and informs Justino that she has sepsis. Then she starts talking about Melanie again and how she needs her brain and spine to make the vaccine, much to Justino's displeasure. Suddenly, Melanie returns and tells them about the children she saw, convinced that they will hunt for Kieran. He's seen walking down a street and suddenly finding an unopened can on the ground and then another one, until he sees a store and crawls under the shutter to get in. Once inside he starts eating and looking trough dirty magazines. A little girl appears behind him, startling him. She lures him between the rafters of the store and momentarily more children appear. When their leader joins them, they all attack Kieran together. Meanwhile, Melanie is leading Parks and Justino to him. She can smell him like the other kids did. They finally arrive at the store, 
go inside and find Kieran half-eaten. Melanie realizes that the children didn't just set a trap for him, but for them as well. They go outside and see that she was right, the group of kids is waiting for them. Melanie challenges the leader and fights with him. When she kills him to prove to the others that she is the strongest, she's able to protect Parks and Justino and lead them back to safety. They arrive at the lab to see that the door is open. When they walk inside, Caldwell sedates them with some kind of gas. She pulls Melanie toward the slab to perform her procedure, but stops because she's in terrible pain from her hand. She turns around for a moment to fix it, but when she turns back around Melanie is already conscious and alert. They talk and she tries to convince the girl to give herself up, so that she can save everyone with her vaccine. Melanie almost agrees, but asks one last question. She wants to know if the doctor thinks she's alive or just mimicking human behavior. Caldwell answers with the former. Then, the girl says, why should we die to save you? Melanie runs out, leaving the doctor in the lab, but she follows her. Lagging behind Melanie, with no gun or protection, Caldwell is immediately surrounded by the zombie children. Meanwhile, the girl goes to the huge fungus they found before. She sets it on fire with the intention to activate the spores. Unfortunately, Parks had followed her too and he gets infected. Melanie didn't plan for that to happen. As he starts turning, he asks her to shoot him before he becomes one of them. Later, Justino wakes up in the lab, protected from the spores, realizing what has happened with Melanie waiting for her outside the lab. In the final moments of the film, Justino is woken up by Melanie. Some time has clearly passed. She take out a whiteboard with her and starts a class with the zombie children listening to her from the other side of the lab window. Melanie is their leader now and they all attend Miss Justino's lessons together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.